I want to ask you a question. Yeah, sure. I had a guy call in the other day, two days ago on the Rise Guy. Yeah. He said, I cheated on my wife and I feel like I need to tell her because it's driving me crazy. I said, well, when did it happen? 10 years ago. 10 years ago. He has a son who's nine. He said, what should I do? What would you do? I'll tell you what I told him, but I want to hear what you would say first. Mine's on tape, so I can't change it. What would you tell him? Because think about that for a minute. We got, we got to quit being so selfish with stuff. Dude. I literally, the fact that you just asked me that question, like I know TJ is probably freaking out right now because like literally like my heart is like racing out of my chest right now because. What's up everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. My name is Tyler Harris. Hi, I'm Matthew Harris. No relation, believe it or not. <laughs> no relation, but we are today the Sales Wolves. Uh, a little Ric Flair on that wolf right there. Yeah, I did Ric Flair on him. Yeah. Thank you for participating in that. Oh, Usually no, no problem. I, I'll Usually do people it. just sit there like, no, no. <laughs> I'll do anything once, mostly. mostly. <laughs> just because we're related. Right. So, Guys, it's episode 70 of uh, the Sales Wolves podcast, and I, uh, I'm glad to have uh, Matt here, Matthew Harris, uh, from here in Greenville, South Carolina, uh, the host of the Rise Guys morning show here on 93.3. Uh, the planet. Yes, sir. And we met for lunch uh, a couple weeks ago. Two weeks ago? A week? Two weeks ago? Right? Almost two weeks ago, maybe. I think it's not that long ago. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think it was last week. But the person's by the time the film is watching this, who knows? Right. Yeah, Once, that's, years, that's what I always have to think about. Decades ago, we met for lunch. Yeah. Uh, but we had an awesome conversation, and I wanted them to bring back in just to talk about um, some more good stuff. And uh, the interesting thing we realized during that lunch is is that it was my senior year of high school, and I started thinking about it more after that lunch, uh, when I started listening to the show, mm -hmm. and listened to, listened to it fairly um, during college, but it was really when I got out of college and I became a financial advisor, I remember I listened, it was like my morning routine. It's like, wake up, and then the car, as I'm driving to work, I would listen to that, and I remember sometimes that I would literally, um, in, at, I would um, get into my office, yeah. and you, you had that like period of time where you're trying to figure out like, you know, how do I get radio, you know, in my office, and right. that kind of like it was when that it was in that kind of like weird technology. When you could be in weird a bad transition part of, of trans building yeah. and not get the radio. Yeah. yeah, well, like even like yeah, like nowhere to get it, so I didn't go to the website and, yep. and I listened to it um, there. I can I can remember a lot of times, and it's just it's an awesome show, hilarious stuff that they, they, that they've done, and they've done such an incredible job of just owning that space for such a long time. Uh, there's been a lot of different characters uh, involved, but man, it's been like a it's like a staple. Not only upstate, but South Carolina and regionally, um, it's just I become a it. it's become a staple. And so, kudos to you. Well, uh, we we that. have a great time, and yeah. like I told you, it's uh, if you if you slow down and just look at life and the people around you, it, this is really the best radio is when you take live calls and you have no clue what they're calling it. about. Yeah, it's a crapshoot sometimes, but when it hits, man. And I, I love mean, how now, great. like you've been doing it for so long, that you're your listeners, you've got ones that when you see they're on the phone, you're like, oh God. Oh yeah. Like, cause you know exactly what is, you know the curveball that's about to be thrown. Right, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll see some names <laughs> and I'll say, okay, what did I say five minutes ago that pissed that's that just person off that. Or, or something <laughs> like that? But yeah, no, I, 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 I hear that uh, a good bit uh, as far as it grew up listening to you, it makes me feel old. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But I mean, Again, to to be doing it 15 years later and yeah, awesome. and doing well with it as far as ratings go, it's it's an absolute pleasure. Yeah. I mean, it's an absolute pleasure. I love it. Very Don't cool. tell the bosses that because I negotiate Absolutely. new contracts. And Interesting. I hate Greenville. I might leave. Hey, isn't free, that weird? Free agency. You, free you agency. have to pretend. Like, there's so much in life that like you have to like. <laughs> I love it here. I want to stay here. I want more money. So I have to go in and act like there's a chance I might yeah. leave. It's like, yep. yeah, it's crazy. But yeah. no, I love Greenville, and uh, you know, I told you, it's fate. You and I. Yeah. This is fate. I believe it. Okay. All right, here's the good. I want to ask you a question. Yeah, sure. I had a guy call in the other day, two days ago, on the Rise Guy. Yeah. He said. I cheated on my wife, and I feel like I need to tell her because it's driving me crazy. I said, well, when did it happen? 10 years ago. 
10 years ago. He has a son who's nine. He cheated on his wife while she was pregnant. And he says that every time he looks at his, his not every time obviously, but when he sees his kid, mm. when he looks at his wife, he feels this incredible guilt. He said, what should I do? What would you do? I'll tell you what I told him, but I want to hear what you would say first. Mine's on tape, so I can't change it. What would you tell him? Because think about that for a minute. We got, we got to quit being so selfish with stuff. Dude. I literally, the fact that you just asked me that question, like I know TJ is probably freaking out right now because like literally like my heart is like racing out of my chest right now because I cheated on my wife like years and years ago, my ex-wife. Yeah. And had never told a single person ever. Like this is literally the first time I've ever said it out loud. Right now? Yeah, right now. Was that you that called my show the other day? No, it was not. Wow. And like literally I've been thinking of a way now, like I have to tell her, and I feel like I have to tell her, so my answer would be yes. Yeah. My ex-wife then, she ended up having an affair for like seven months. And I made her feel terrible for it. You know, yeah. and and I like and, and and it was just like a drunken, stupid thing like yeah. that I had done. This guy was working out of town and just yeah had to be at the hotel bar and that's exactly like that's literally exactly what it was. Um, but I had held that inside and it was it was at this event um, that we had had with with Sean when he was talking. He said, "Write down something that you've never told anybody ever before." Mm -hmm. And like I had buried it down so far deep that like I forgot, like not forgot, but like I like almost believed it not to be true. Like oh, yeah. I almost, like like literally, I was trying to think back to it, and like I could be, I, like I still like I have this mental block yeah. of like not even be able, to, not even being able to think about it. And so I am going to tell her. She probably is going to see this video, um, but I am going to talk to her about it, and. I, t I told my wife, my current wife, about it. She didn't know. Yeah. You know, how would she, unless I had told her? But I told her about it, and I didn't know if she was going to be upset. Yeah. Like, I, the, the, you know, I was, it was a different person. Yeah. I was a different person uh, back then. Uh, but when I told her, she, her immediate reaction was, you know, well, you don't need it. Like, I know you're all about transparency, but you're like, you don't need to put this stuff out there. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I do. And she's like, why? And she's like, what's, what's, what, are, what are her parents gonna think? And I'm like, I don't know, maybe a little less, maybe a little less terrible about their daughter? Yeah. They're like, what's her sister gonna think that I'm still really close with um, and, and you know, friends with? Like, what's her sister gonna think? It's like, I don't know, maybe bad for treating her sister like garbage when she had the affair? Mm -hmm. I'm like, these are all positive things. Yeah. Like, like the truth, the truth, like, the truth is set you, sets you free, like, of course. But, like, the truth is the only thing that matters. Yeah. Like, the only thing. And, and I can't believe in this podcast, you, we literally talked about how timing is always perfect, and you just asked me that question. And, like, it's the, like, it's literally, like... Where's the landscape when you need it? But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, insert dramatic pause. Um, but, like, but literally... When I wrote that out, mm -hmm. I started crying, like crying, crying, mm -hmm. because it was that's just, it was just like releasing a, it. That's another thing is that like, you're, you're okay to cry. Yeah. Like everybody is, man. It doesn't man. happen often, but when it does, it's like the most like therapeutic, like I heard the dance by ever. Garth Brooks the other night and I cried. <laughs> I did. I was I told you I cried, I cried, I cried, I cried, I cried, uh, I cried last week listening to that freaking Kanye West song about his daughter. Oh yeah. And I got a 20 month old daughter and I'm sitting in there in the car like, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like, like changes like, freaking, everything. Like, freaking Kanye, yeah. um, but but yeah. So like to answer your question, and thank you for asking. <laughs> now I was asking how you would react, not but not see that's that thing we go back yeah. to of like. But, but I would, but I like, but I, I think like the truth has to be put out there. Like it has to be put out because you don't you. Have, what's the alternative? Right. Withholding the truth is the exact same thing as lying. Yeah. And it's like, do you want to live a lie or do you want to live in truth? And there's really no in between. Yeah. Like there's, there's literally no in between. And when you start thinking about that, then it puts everything in this perspective of like seeking the truth in all areas of your life, mm -hmm. um, which is a very interesting place to be, but it's a very, um, 
growth mindset. It's a very, it's a very expansive place to be mentally. Oh yeah. When you're all about the truth. Uh -huh. Because one lie creates another one, and then the whole series goes. But but why but why would I? When you just asked me that, like mm -hmm. like Jesus, <laughs> like putting me on the spot here, like like. It would have been so easy for me to listen to that question just now and just been like, I don't know what you, I don't, I don't, I don't know what you, what, yeah. well, I don't know what I would tell them. Like, yeah, I don't know. And then just like continue on my day yeah. and like not have had this conversation that we're having right now. Um, but why would I have done that? Mm -hmm. It would have because, it would have been because like I would be afraid of who would see this and I would be afraid sure. of what they think. Yeah. And it's ego, like that's all it is. Like uh -huh. it's literally the only thing that would have stopped me from saying what I just said is ego. Yeah. But when you start really embracing this idea of like not caring what people think, yeah, it's not just that you don't. It's not that you don't care about them. Right. You just know that their opinion doesn't matter. Like their opinion doesn't affect what your their opinion. You're always going to care. Yeah. But it shouldn't affect your actions. It shouldn't affect the things that you do. Sure. By what somebody else thinks about it, and even when it hurts, like that, like that, like I promise you, somebody's going to be watching this video, and I'm getting emotional even thinking about it. Jesus. You see, this is what I'm going to tell you, man. Like it's the same thing I told him. He feels awful about it. Yeah. But, but even after he had no game plan, after he told his wife, no, no, you know, need to tell the son. But yeah. after he told her, he didn't have a game plan. Yeah. And I was like, you haven't forgiven yourself yet. Yeah. Like even if she says, oh, it's okay, I would he still feel better? No, he hadn't forgiven himself. Yeah. How many things have you done in your life you're embarrassed about, or wish you could go back and change? Mm -hmm. A lifetime of them. But you wouldn't be where you are without them. And. That's not to just make you feel better about the situation, um, yeah. you know. No, it's, but it's true. like like in, in what I was saying. Like I like there are like there are going to be people that are going to get hurt hearing what I just said. A lot of people, mm -hmm. like her, my parents, other family of mine, family of hers, people we know. But okay, yeah. Like it's 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 the truth. It's the truth. <laughs> like, and and you have to be willing sometimes to go through pain to live life the right way. Like you do. like if you if you make if you made a decision, like you can't you can't say like, man, I'm all about man, I'm all about like doing what's right mm -hmm. when it's comfortable. Or like, man, I'm all about doing what's right. From here moving forward, yep. It's like if if you're all about doing what's right, then you're all about doing what's right. Like, <laughs> like as 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 uncomfortable as it can possibly get. Yeah. And that's why, like, you brought up this this idea, this topic of transparency. It's like I'm a hundred percent transparent mm -hmm. when it makes me look good. Oh boy! <laughs> like yeah. Like I'll tell everything. Like I, man, like. I've lost a bunch of weight lately. Uh, you know, here recently, like I'll take my shirt off on camera on Instagram, but would I have done it before? Right. Like when yeah. I was in the worst shape of my life, like yeah. I'll talk about all this, all these struggles I went through. Once I've gotten on the other side and really figured it out and really figured yep. out the way to position it to make me look freaking awesome. Yeah. Like, like there's no. There's no nobility in that, like like telling the the bad stuff when you've got the good story to to make you look good from it. Right. Like it's being willing to tell the bad stuff and say like I don't have the rest figured out yet. Like like even that like that 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 was something I did a long time ago. There could be stuff that I did yesterday. Yeah. And if it was wrong, and like confessing those things or talking about those things that like you're still dealing with. And you don't have the answers to, right. and and you know people are going to look at you differently, and, mm -hmm. and being like, I don't really care how people look. At and me. and with your parents, you know, like th that's you know s something in itself there, but they taught you to, I'm sure, learn from mistakes. Absolutely. Everybody kind of starts yeah. with that, and you did. Yeah. And I see the absolutely. proof on your wall here in the yeah. studio. Yeah, yeah. With your wife and yeah. beautiful daughter. Yeah, absolutely. So that's I. You know what? Mr. and Mrs. Harris, likely <laughs> aunt and uncle of me, if we got it down, you know, he, he's learned and 
I mean. Well, it's interesting because I've, I've, thought, I've thought about it, and it's like, did they want me to be a good person in college, or did they want me to grow up to be a good person? Right. Period. Yeah. Like that's, and then like what that's, does grow up mean? Like, <laughs> what, like you know, uh, yeah. when do you grow up? Is it 18? Is it this? Is that? Or is it ever? Or is it ever? Yeah. Like, what does grow up mean? Mm-hmm. Like, grow up, it, stop learning? Yeah. Hopefully to, never. And, and to me, the, the definition of growing up is when you've finally taken personal responsibility for not just the good stuff, but all the bad stuff. Oh, yeah. Like, when you've taken personal responsibility and you've owned it. Mm-hmm. Like, being able to own the stuff you've done, to be able to own the stuff that's been done to you yeah. and know that like whatever that stuff was, it's either something that you allowed to have happen, mm-hmm. but the stuff that happened to you that you couldn't control, that you've allowed to influence the last five, 10, 15, 20 yeah. years. Because I used, to, I used to talk about like how everything's your fault, everything's your fault. And I believe that everything's your fault. But then I would have those subjects like, well, what about when I was molested as a child? Or what about when I was sexually assaulted? Was that my fault? And I'm like, crap, geez, no. That was not your fault. Well, we also have a you're, But the right fact now. that you're 50, the fact that you're 50, 55 years old, 60 years old, and you're still letting what happened to you when you were 13 yep. Affect how you view the world, affect how you handle your relationships, affect how you treat your kids, affect how you treat your wife or your husband. Like, that is your fault. Absolutely. That is your fault. Yeah, well, it, and it's how, how your reaction, you know, to yeah. a lot of things. Back to the original point yeah. you think your life sucks. Yeah. You think your life sucks. Mm-hmm. Don't go up to anybody and say, boy, my life sucks. Here's why. They're going to give you nine, ten more reasons why exactly. theirs is worse. Um, but and, it's but, to learn from them. And that. It's like the best way to go through life is understanding that when you talk about, about tr- treating others like you want to be treated, I think the key to that is every day as you walk through life, understanding that you have no earthly idea what the person on the other side of the table is going through. Mm. And, and that, that gives you that gives you forgiveness. Yeah. That gives you like grace. That gives you um, uh, patience. Oh yeah. To know that like when you're at a restaurant and the server is just giving you terrible, terrible service, mm-hmm. or does something that frustrates you, it's easy to be like ah yeah. and like and get pissed off. Like this is the worst freaking service I've ever had, and leave them no tip. Yeah. But but what you don't know is is right before that server came on shift, what they were dealing with at home yeah. in the horrible situation that like they're, they're winning that day just by showing up yeah. because they have, cause you have no idea what mm-hmm. they're going through. Like if you can go through life looking at it in that regard, then it'll give you like, that's empathy. Like that's empathy for the, the things that you don't even know exists yeah. around you. Yeah. I, I, I think it was uh, you, uh, you last time that, uh, that said, you know, everybody wants to, to be, you know, the, the big dog, to be the lion, to be on the hunt yeah. until you have to take the first bite out of yeah. the competition or you yeah. actually have to hunt. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody wants to be a beast and go in beast mode. Yeah. But when it comes time <laughs> to go out there and, yeah. Just That's slam true. right through the competition, yeah. or do this, or do that, or even take, you know, uh, do things you don't want to do. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's been plenty of times, truthfully, when I had appearances and stuff on like at the weekends, and I yeah. want to leave the house or leave yeah. my family, but you know, it, it was part of the job. Yeah. Um, and and when you get there, you know, it's it's the best time in the world. And everybody wants everybody else to tell the truth. Yeah. But right. But they, are they willing to tell the truth right. themselves? And that, and that's. And that's the big thing. And, and I did this um, Facebook Live uh, that we did it as an episode of the blog yesterday, but I did this Facebook Live um, two nights ago uh, when I had like a lot of this realization and, and realized that like I had been like literally I had convinced myself of this lie for the last 18 months as I've been kind of documenting my life on social media. Mm-hmm. Like I had convinced myself that like all this stuff about like not monetizing not selling anything and like it's just about adding value and it's that's that's all it is and and like you're never going to hear me say like buy this thing or whatever whatever yeah and it was ego mm-hmm. 
it was like I like because I want you to think I'm like Mother Teresa with like some muscles yeah. and like 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 li- like literally and it was also this stuck in this kind of like who am I complex of like well what value do I have you know but I'm gonna tell everybody yeah. I'm gonna tell everybody that I'm not like it's all I would talk about it's literally all I would talk about is how I don't monetize anything yeah. as though that was my value to this planet is that I'm not gonna ask you for something like like right. it makes no sense but when I started. When I started working through this stuff, and, and really was working with Sean um, all day two days ago, and he just kept asking me why, and like I've I've just become had this realization of what a powerful question that one word can be yeah. when asked repeatedly over and over and over and over, because you'll give an answer. Yeah, it's like, but why? And you yeah. give an answer like, but really why? Yeah. But really why? But really why? And then all of a sudden, like, then you start, like, scratching at the surface of the truth, and it's like, oh, but, but really. So like, you but tell my therapist, because when I, when, sometimes I'll even say, you know, like I just did, I, I do it for my child. I do it for my child. Yeah. I do it for my child. I do it for my family. Yeah. But then when you peel back the layers, there is mm-hmm. that level of ego, selfishness, things like that, yeah. where, you know, we'll, we'll say, like, I, I know a buddy of mine that's a, a, well, a, a, a very accomplished chef. Yeah. Uh, he went and studied in China. Wow. He's making a little bit of money. Now, this uh, Christmas, he's going to take his family, mom and dad, to China to show them where he lived. His hmm. mom and dad don't want to go. Yeah. And he's like, well, I want to go and show you. I want you to have the time of your life. Mm-hmm. Somewhere they don't want to go. But it's his ego because yeah. he wants to go and exactly. show them. And I told him that. And he's like... Wow, and it kind of is it. Mm-hmm. There's a little bit of selfishness in us, and you just don't want it to, you know, to get too high. You got to be a little bit selfish, especially if you're in. It's not even just. It's not just business, but it's like, you know, I don't know if there's a, a piece of bread and your family's hungry, and there's another family over there going for that piece of bread. What happens? Mm-hmm. You got to be a little selfish and take that's care the of thing, yours. Like it's not even. It's not even selfish. Like, like when you when you really start to like really understand this whole concept of like putting your oxygen mask on first yeah you realize that like okay I have to put my oxygen mask on Mm -hmm. first to be able to save the people around me yeah but I'm sitting here saying that this is selfish Mm -hmm. and it's it's the furthest from it like because I can't like I it's a impossibility for me to help my spouse. It's an impossibility for me to provide for my daughter if I don't have that. Yep. So it's the least selfish thing in the freaking world. It is. But and it's like, that, that mindset though yeah. where it's, you know, I, I use the media as an example. It's not just the media, it's just life. It's yeah. people at work, it's, it's uh, folks that you run in circles with that it, it's we are a product of our childhood, of TV, of social media, everything. And there is the the mindset of if a man cries, uh, that's an effeminate thing. Mm-hmm. Or if he goes to see, I can't tell you how many people that literally looked at me sideways when I told them that I'd been in therapy for a year. Yeah. And this was years ago, but they're like, "What's what's wrong with you?" It's like, what? Well, hopefully, nothing's wrong with me. <laughs> but sometimes I need somebody to talk to that. There's no connection to that. It's not going to pass any judgment. What you should have said is, "You're what's wrong with me." Like <laughs> the fact that you're asking me that question you is, the re- is is what's wrong. With, you is, should know, Aunt is Connie. what's wrong with me. <laughs> right. Yeah, like, but that, but that's that, like that's the problem. Is like we're we're in a s- situation, especially as men, where we can't talk about these things. Yeah. And where somebody would say, like, "Oh, you're going to marriage counseling? What's wrong, bro?" Like, no, like I'm going to marriage counseling because I want my marriage to last. Yeah. Like I want my marriage to be good, mm-hmm. but not because there's a problem. Yeah. Like. There's always problems. Always. Like, like there's always problems, and it's just there's those that are trying to actively or proactively fix those problems, yep. or there are those that just want to push them under the rug and Deal with you know be big and big and tough. But like that, like you can convince yourself of that stuff. Like I had convinced my like. Like I mean, like I like Gary V. Like I like no wait wait Gary V. Like it's just all about adding value. Like like no like I have to like I can't like I have to do this thing. It's legacy. It's legacy. It's legacy. It's legacy. And finally, that day two days ago, it was like the twelfth hour in of going through like this why why why, and uh, Sean said just I want you to write for like twenty minutes, just kind of what you're thinking, and and you know we'll come back to it. So I go and I'm just start writing. So he comes back to him and says he's like all right. Read what you wrote. What, were you th- what are you thinking? What's going through your mind? And like the first thing I wrote was, what type of legacy am I really building 
if my daughter is going to have to watch these videos to learn the things that should have been showing her in person. And like the second that I said it, it was just like, he literally just goes, yeah. bingo. There it is. He's like, 12 hours, that's all it took, mm -hmm. 12 hours. Mm -hmm. But like, I have been so freaking like proud of the fact and, and just like shouting from the rooftops. Like, like when I first came up with this concept, of like I'm doing these videos and I'm documenting my life for her. And I would say like, how cool would it be to watch a video of your great grandfather, yeah. of him going throughout his day? Which yeah, it'd still be cool. Sure. But like, I was creating a scenario where my daughter's gonna have to watch those videos yeah. because I'm not around. Right. Like my wife's gonna have to watch these videos to see what happened to me last week. Yeah. Because I didn't talk to her about it. Yeah. Like, like that's 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 not a legacy. That's freaking sad. Like that's like that is like it's completely backwards. And once I like wrote it out, and once I said it, I'm like, holy crap. And it's this idea, and and Sean, like a lot of people, they refer to it like, the king eats first. The king eats first. The king eats first. The king eats first. And what I realized, and what I said in this video that night when I got on Instagram Live and Facebook Live, I was like, I looked right in the camera, and I'm like. For the last 18 months, I've been working myself almost to the breaking point. And I'm so grateful that like, I came to this realization literally two days ago and not two years from now, because I would have probably have reached the breaking point by two years. I probably could have hung in there for another year and a half. Yeah. But working myself to death, for who? You? Mm -hmm. And I like looked in the mirror, I'm like, you people? All right. I'm like, if I needed something right now, like, you're not gonna give me something. Like, right. like, I'm doing all this stuff for a bunch of strangers. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know you, you don't know me. Yeah. Like, we may, may never meet, ever. They may never comment or like, and you may and not And I told, I'm like, you don't even share stuff. Right. I'm like, I have to beg you to share a video. Yeah. Like, you can't even share a video. Yeah. And I'm like, literally spending all this time away from my daughter and wife. I'm spending all this money. I'm doing all this stuff. I'm like not sleeping well and just like just burning the candle at both ends. Yeah. I'm like, for you? Yeah. And I'm putting myself second, my wife third, my daughter fourth. Yeah. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm like things now are gonna change. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, we're still gonna put out content and it's still gonna be great stuff. Mm -hmm. But my mindset now is the king eats first. Like, I am the priority, mm -hmm. then my wife, then my daughter. And then I'll try to provide as, as much value as I can. Yeah. But you can there's only so much overflow from an empty freaking glass. Like, and and who's getting the overflow? Mm -hmm. Like, is it my spouse and daughter that's getting the overflow? Mm -hmm. When I've been gone for 18 hours a day for four days straight and I come home and like, yeah, I can rev myself up and get all amped up to like go play with my daughter. Yeah. But how much of me is she really, really getting? When I'm like sitting here, I'm like, wait, babe, you don't understand. You don't understand. Like, TJ just posted the vlog <laughs> on on Facebook, which means now I have to take the the one minute videos with the thumbnail, and I have to put it on Instagram. I have to change the link in my profile. Mm -hmm. I have to do the Instagram story, letting all these freaking strangers yeah. know that the vlog episode for Friday is now up. Uh -huh. And like these are like real conversations. Like this isn't just like funny like hyperbole. No, I know. Like this is not hyperbole. Like this is like like arguments with my wife. Like like babe, like you've been gone all week. It's dinner time. I'm like the freaking episode. It just came out. Like it just yeah. like it it's it's ten o'clock. Have you ever seen? As though like the people are waiting. Like as though like there's someone at their house going like. Oh man. Like. You said like, there, the, yeah. Like, like, I gotta go to bed soon. Like, where's the vlog? Like, where's the vlog? Like, freaking, like. It, they're sitting there waiting for it in their in their hands. And like the whole monetization aspect of like not charging for that. My my thought process now is like that person that's sitting there, like 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 where is it? Yeah. They should be willing to pay for it. And oh, they would be question. willing to pay for it. Sure. And the person that's not willing to pay for it, screw them anyways. Like, It'll be like the it doesn't big fat gator trying to get the uh, it doesn't, piece of meat. It doesn't help me any. Like, like yeah. it's like whether someone's waiting for the content the second it comes out, or whether they could, whether they could absolutely care less. Like that doesn't matter to me. At the end of the day, I'm doing all this stuff for me. Yep. And I was hiding behind this mask of saying I was doing it for my family. I like literally. 
I was in, I was doing a Facebook Live on, on the, in the car one day, and this line came to my head, and like when I said it, I thought I was freaking Tony Robbins. Like I thought like somebody freaking make a meme out of me right now. Like, <laughs> and I said, I travel away for my family, not from my family. And like when I said those words, like literally, I was like, oh my God, I might be a genius. Yeah. Like that's the smartest thing I've ever said. And now I'm just like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever thought was the smartest thing I ever said. Like, like it's, it's so freaking backwards. Mm-hmm. And now coming to that realization, like, I, shame, like shame on me, but like, and thank God my wife has hung in there this last 18 months. And it's only because I'm an incredible salesperson. <laughs> like, li- like well, yeah. I, I've sold her on the same bill of goods that I've, that I've bought. Like, yeah. like, I've sold her on it hard. And you get a message here and there on Facebook like, yeah, you did this vlog episode and like, it saved my life or like, it's changed my life, it's changed how it looks. And I would, that, that stuff would like literally feed my ego. Yeah. But it would, it would like make these deposits in this account that I would draw, would withdraw from when I needed to justify what I was really doing, which was killing myself. Uh-huh. Like literally, like, I mean, I'm working like 16 hours a day and I'm like talking all day long. And I like, I get out of that meeting and I'm like, oh crap, now we gotta film some content for today because if the people don't get what they want, <laughs> like if the people don't get the vlog episode today, then like, God forbid, like yeah. the world, like the literally the world's gonna stop. And the, like now, like I look at it, and I'm just like, it's 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 becoming more clear. Like this is literally all an epiphany as of two days ago, but it's becoming more clear, and it's making me realize like how ridiculous that sounds. Like how yeah. ridiculous that sounds, and how messed up that was for me to put my family through that. Yeah. Like I would like literally another thing I would say. I would say, my friends, my friend here would tell me. You know, you need to be at home. You know, what about your daughter? Mm. And like, I would tell the story of like, yeah, my daughter needs me. She's almost two, but what she really needs is like food, and like milk, yeah, and like sleep, mm-hmm. and someone to change her. Mm-hmm. Like when she really needs me is when she's thirteen, yeah. and when she really needs me is when she's sixteen. And what can I create over here over the next? 13 years so that when she is 13, she'll have this incredible lifestyle. I'm like, no, she won't. She'll have an incredible lifestyle by herself without me. Absolutely. And like, I'm so freaking grateful to have that epiphany right now. Like literally as we're talking to know that like, it's not freaking 13 years from now and I'm literally hating myself. Yeah. For, for have done that, for having done that to myself. 20 months old. Like, Like, I'm so grateful right now that I've come to this realization so that it's not her 13th birthday and I'm like, mm-hmm. hey, how the last 13 years been? Yeah. Like I saw this picture one time of Kobe Bryant, it was like after he retired from the NBA mm-hmm. and it was, the, it was the funniest picture because it was like him, I think he's got like two kids or three kids, however many kids, whatever it is. But it was him and his kids and his wife like sitting on the couch in the living room and it was just like him looking at them and it said, so what do y'all like to do? <laughs> Because it was like he just retired. Dude, yeah. He's finally home for the first time. Mm-hmm. It was like, so, what do you guys like? What do you what do you guys you like seen into? The movie Click with Adam Sandler. No, it's not one of his big. I hits. remember what it looked like. It was like a big remote control yeah. thing. Like, but I've never seen it. It was about you know it, the message was like quit being so fast paced with your life. Basically, like you know, he's at home one day and he uh, you know finds out that uh, he has some kind of gimmick that he can fast forward through parts of his life he didn't want to deal with. Yeah. Uh, but one day the the remote gets stuck hmm. and it fast forwards and he's elderly and his kids come to see him and he's dying and like it's an Adam Sandler movie that is shocking yeah. that actually like whoa man yeah. and I will never ever like. I would never look at life differently because of that Adam Sandler movie yeah. because I could see myself saying those tough times back to what we were talking about at the beginning. You want to fast forward through them and just get through this. I got to get through this thing. Yeah, but yeah. that's when the real lessons come. Dude, like Sean was explaining to like our company when he came in, he's like, everybody reads books and they read these biographies of successful people yeah. and they get... 38 chapters in and it gets to the last chapter and it's talking about all these things these people have done and all the successes and all the breakthroughs and all this stuff but at the very end of that person's freaking life what do they always say i wish i'd spend more time with my family Mm -hmm. 
I wish I would have spent more time with my daughter. Yeah. I wish I would have spent more time with my wife. And every single person, they read that and they go, oh, all right, time to execute on chapter one, two, three, four, mm-hmm. five. Let me run, 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 run. It's like, no, no, no. Like, ju- just read the last chapter of biographies. Yeah. Like, that, like, just read that. And like, it was only freaking three weeks ago when he was telling us that. And I was just like, yeah. I'm like, that's right, tell him, Sean. Mm-hmm. I'm like, get him. I'm like, you're exactly right. Like, like you don't want to live with regret, like regret. Like once you once you have it, like there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. And I'm sitting here, I'm like, freaking numb nuts. Like, wake up. Like, like I'm like, that's literally what you're doing. That's literally what you're doing. Is you're saying, like, yeah, 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 like I get all that, but like, all right, cool. Uh-huh. It's not it's not it's not sexy. It's it's yeah. just too simple. Well, it's just but it's the only thing that matters, like really. And when, and when you and when you can truly embrace this, like he eats first. When you can truly figure out that, like, the least selfish thing in the world is to be the most selfish person in yeah. the world. Like that, that nothing matters more than your own well-being, mm-hmm. and then the well-being of those you love, and then, and not until then, everyone else. But by figuring it out that way, you're able to help more people than than Ever anyone. before. But when you were just focused on helping others yeah. and leaving yourself last, mm-hmm. then you're that's what, like you're literally like you're trying to like I got a little bit left in here, but like you're you're like trying to pour from a freaking empty bottle and there's nothing left. Nothing like there's nothing left. left. It's all been taken away from us. Jesus. Man. Dude, thank you uh, thank you for doing this podcast and thank you for asking me that insanely insanely uncomfortable question because well. like literally Timing is freaking perfect and like like how does the universe like literally how does the universe conspire on a podcast that wasn't going well? You could feel it, I could feel it. Like we were kind of rambling all like we were both kind of like we're all going over in the circles place. and a landscaper uh, abducted the show yeah. for a moment. And like it wasn't really going all that well. And now the TV is going off, which is like the perfect like I love when like this is transparency. Like oh, there's the TV back. Like but it it, it was fine, it was what it was, but then like how does the universe conspire to where you asked me the question that like literally when you asked it like it was like and like I was like I need to say it 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 and like my heart was like literally beating out of my chest well like I told you you said something a moment ago and I don't know if I will come back on here with you we'll talk about it because like I told you before some things on some things are not rise guys appropriate or even probably wouldn't be well received yeah but yeah man and some people and some things shouldn't be public like some like but but you know but they still need to be talked about yeah yeah yeah, offline it really does Uh, but like like it's I'm just growing more and more and more aware that still growing up everything everything happens for a reason and that timing like we said um, is always perfect so I don't really know what the theme of this podcast will end up being Hmm. um, you know but it's been freaking awesome. It has been awesome. It's been Telling good. Telling the truth in sales. Telling the truth in sales. Yeah, like, you know, sales wolves, secrets. That's yeah. Like, sales wolves, secrets. What was that? Remember that? What was that back in the day? It was, was SNL, like, right? Yeah. Saturday Night yeah. Live? Um, I think so. Oh, geez. Who knows? Yeah, that's fine. Who but knows? anyway, sales wolves, sales wolves, secrets. Um, but yeah, so this is episode 70. Golly, it's been all over the place. It was the and, best. Um, it was the worst. It was the best of times. We laughed. We cried. Literally. We sweat our asses off. We, it is so hot in here, and I cannot wait to leave this room, quite frankly. But this was episode 70 of the Sales Wolves podcast. I am your host, Tyler Harris. I'm Matthew Harris. <laughs> and we are the Sales, Sales Wolves. Wolves. Uh-